Yeah, you big boy. Yeah, good boy. What's up, everybody? Um, out here on a really cold Saturday morning, um, trying to just kind of get some projects done. As you know, I've been working on the 55 Chevy. You can't see it. It's outside of the shots right there. Got it up and running. It is running perfect. Uh, Dad and Mom drove in it the other day and kind of got to relive some memories, so that was really fun. Yeah, I've been daily driving the 89 uh, 635 this week. Again, um, I, I don't get, I, I, you know, I've got a lot of cars here and, and I've got kind of daily drivers and I just kind of move them around and, and depends on weather and depends on kind of what I'm doing that week, whether I drive it. Uh, so I got back into the 89 uh, 635 this week. It's an automatic uh, car, uh, just a great cruiser. Really enjoy driving this and fell back in love with it again. Um, you know, you kind of fall, fall in and out of love pretty easily with cars because it seems like the next car that you get into, you just love it. Uh, and then you forget about the last one. Um, well, in this case, it happened to me again this week with the 635, uh, the 89. Man, just really enjoy driving it. Um, it's comfortable. It gets around town really well. It's easy to park. Um, and you get a lot of looks, get a lot of thumbs up. Anywhere you go, gets good gas mileage. Uh, but, unfortunately, uh, both the 55 and the 89 are going away uh, in the next week or two as far as uh, putting them on the market to sell. I am going to keep the uh, the M, which is right over here. You can kind of see the front fender. Uh, I'll keep the M635. It's an 85 Euro with the uh, five-speed. So that's the one. If I'm going to if I'm going to keep one or the other, as far as the BMW goes, six series, uh, definitely got to keep the M. So that's staying in the stable. I uh, finally got the title and everything switched over for the Willys. Uh, so as you can tell, I got the tag. Uh, I am officially legal in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, I have insurance and tag, so when it gets a little bit better weather, uh, I'm going to take this thing out on the road and kind of give you guys driving experience of driving in a 1948 Willys. Uh, but I'm going to teach my other daughter, my 16-year-old, uh, how to drive sh stick shift uh, actually out on the road in this thing. And so I've got it fully certified, ready to go. And uh, really, as, as I mentioned before, just waiting on paint and stuff to come in. And then uh, I've got to paint it, put a, little, or put a little Bondo on it, then paint it. Uh, and then sell it, uh, but before that we're going to have some fun. So, what we're going to be doing today um, is working on the Model T. Um, I have uh, I had my father-in-law come down, he is a Model T and Model A expert, and we tried to work on this and get this running the other day, and it would not start. I just cannot get it to crank over. Today I'm going to take the starter off, um, see if I can get it to free up at all, and we're going to get this thing at least cranking uh, today. Um, and hopefully, I don't think I can get it started because I've still got some fuel leak problems coming out of the fuel tank. Uh, right down here is a petcock uh, for the fuel tank, uh, and it is just not doing very well as far as it's leaking really badly, and uh, I'm going to have to take that apart and rebuild it. Uh, but once I get the fuel uh, problem fixed, um, I think I've got everything else ready to go on this thing, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it running today, but I at least want to be able to get it cranking today. Uh, I've got my, uh, whoa, got my youngest daughter uh, here, and of course, good old Moose. Uh, Annabelle's going to help me uh, get this thing running again, and of course, Moose is always going to be there for leadership and moral support. Hey, Moose. Um, and uh, he's going to come and check on things, make sure I'm doing things correctly. Are you going to jump on me? Okay. So hey, hello guys. Over here on the Model T and on the uh, driver's side is where the starter, if it has a mechanical starter installed, uh, it would go in right there and obviously it would engage, uh, spin the flywheel and get this thing started. It could be a bad starter, who knows? But I'm gonna take it off, dig into it and see what I can find out. And if anything, I can get another starter. Um, I could probably find another starter for, I don't know, probably a hundred bucks or so. I could probably have it rebuilt uh, for about the same price, uh, but I'm gonna look into it and see how it goes. All right, guys, so I got the uh, the starter off the Model T. Now you can kind of see a little bit better picture of this was mounted to the front right by the engine on the, dri on the uh, driver's side. You got this full long shaft that actually goes through the bell housing. So your accelerator and your brake and your clutch and everything pedals are right here. And so this is, is, this is going all the way through. Then there was a little cap that sat on this and covered up this spring mechanism. Uh, well, so I got the spring mechanism off. I'm looking through it. It's you know again guys everything I see here It's all oiled up really nice. Um, I don't see any broken teeth anything like that 
Uh, I don't know what any of this does. Uh, it's kind of an interesting thing here that as I turn it, that uh, shaft has actually got a spiral cut on it so that uh, it looks like the starter teeth uh, engagement uh, mechanism that actually goes on the flywheel moves back and forth um, as it's turning. So again, don't know exactly how that all works, but I'll, I'll dig into it and find out. This little uh, deal went actually inside that and screwed into this shaft here to keep it uh, on. And as soon as I took that off, this whole shaft was able to be moved. I thought this screw was actually going to have, or this bolt was actually going to have to come out too, but it looks like, oh, okay, so it just retains the spring. So if I, were to, if I were to take that bolt out, this spring mechanism would come off if I wanted to take that part. But in this case, it doesn't look like I need to do that. So this fits in here like so. Uh, it's a good thing it's got a little key actually inside the shaft because when I took it out, this little piece fell out on me. Uh, and it looks like it fits in like so into this shaft uh, upside down and then wh which actually allows you to get this on appropriately um, and then this locks it into place. Now inside that inside that uh, cylinder there there is no key uh, so it looks like this can turn in any way shape that it wants to other than this device goes in the bottom here and actually holds it in place because it's held on uh, through that key mechanism. So uh, hopefully I can get this all put together uh, correctly, but it didn't look like it's it's uh, too crazy. Now, um, the obviously the part that I'm worried about is whether this starter was uh, seized up or not. So I got my awl and I'm just sticking it in this little uh, uh, retainer bolt hole and moving it around and it turns freely. It turns freely both ways. Hey Moose. You're gonna have to get out of shot, buddy. Nobody can see this. Hey, go back there. Thank you, sir. Okay, so this goes around and turns freely. Um, so I don't have, <laughs> Yeah. just laugh at me, daughter. I appreciate it. Um, this goes around, uh, it's free. I don't have, you know, there is really no resistance. So I really don't know what's going on. Uh, it doesn't look like the starter is frozen. I'm going to put positive power to this uh, starter and just see if I can get this shaft to turn on its own. Okay guys, this is when uh, a good long set of jumper cables comes in handy. So what I've done is I've moved it to, i moved the starter to the floor, so if it gets a little crazy on me it's not flying off and hitting anything. Um, I've got a good long set of jumper cables here and I've actually hooked onto the 6 volt battery in the, in the back of the uh, T. Moose, can you move over here buddy? Because I don't want you to get hurt. I don't think this is going to do anything, but just in case it could sling oil everywhere buddy hey back up okay you don't want to back up I'm just gonna stay and inspect huh okay so I don't know exactly what's gonna happen um, this is this I've got positive to po hey, nope moose <laughs> this is not time to shake my hand I know you want to try I understand that I appreciate that sir nice meeting you can you can you please exit no, I can't exit. Okay, so go over here. I don't know what to do with you. Um, Moose, come on. Go over there. Come over here. There you go, buddy. Good job. Okay, so, no, you came back. I'm going to hit this and just see what happens. Well, nothing happens. I'm trying to see here. Do I have any power? I may not have any power. So let's redo our deal here, make sure I'm hooked up solid. I'm hooked up solid, but it sure doesn't feel like I've got any. I got nothing. Alright guys, so I reconnected the battery. I've, I've, I've got I've got sparks now as you can tell. So if I put this power on, it should spin and it is doing nothing. Um, now the only issue that I'm, I'm dealing with now is I don't know if there's a ground that has to go to this starter for it to have a circuit go through it. I don't necessarily have a, ever have a ground, I don't believe, go into a starter, but it's actually grounded because it's, it's screwed to the vehicle. Um, so I've got to figure out if that's the case, then I should be able to, let me just put this on here and see what happens. Moose, this is either going to be fun or not fun for you. Okay, I've got zero 
anything going on, even with the ground strap going strict, you know, directly to the starter itself. I've got, oh, there we go. How about that? Check that out, guys. I've got, I got turning. So my starter is good. Um, now, so that kind of brings me back to, I bet you I have a ground problem actually on the Model T itself. All right, guys, so I've got the uh, starter put back on. Uh, I got the battery cables. Uh, I kind of retightened all those, moved the, um, the ground strap around, and it should be, um, it should start. So cross your fingers. Let's see what happens. And here we go. I, I, well, hold on a second. Let me make sure I got my, my ignitions on. I've got it up on a jack, so if the back wheels start turning, it's not going to go anywhere. So let's see. Look at that. How about that, boys? We've got, uh, sure enough, the back wheels are turning, so it is, uh, go ahead and get a shot of those back wheels while they're turning. I've got everything hooked up right, so now it's just fuel. All right, guys, so we made a huge leap in the Model T restoration. Moose, you think that's exciting? I like that. All right, where I'm at and kind of stuck at is this petcock right here, or this fuel bowl. Um, it's not really a fuel bowl, but it's 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 a petcock that goes underneath uh, the car. Fuel line goes in there underneath the so it's hanging on the gas tank like so. Fuel line comes in here, feeds the um, carburetor. This is leaking in here. It's leaking out of this too. It's re this is really loose um, down at the bottom uh, where it's basically a fuel drain or a prime. Um, this doesn't close all the way, and then actually the the on and off you know uh, device. Um, or the petcock does not uh, seal. Um, I, I'm kind of bummed about that because this has the original. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Hopefully, it's it's um, allowing you to see that. But you can see that the Ford emblem is actually uh, stamped into this. Um, you got another one here that's stamped in, stamped into the brass. So I'm kind of bummed because this is an original piece. Um, but I'm, I don't, I just, I can't figure out how to get these two things right here to stop leaking, uh, these two valves. Um, so that kind of bums me out. And so I'm going to have to probably buy a reproduction piece for this to make sure it's tight. But really that's where I'm stuck, um, is, uh, getting fuel to the engine to get this thing started. Now I could, I could, you know, rig up something to where I would just have free flowing out of the tank into the carburetor to be able to get it started today. Um, definitely could do that. Uh, but I think I'm going to wait and make sure it's done right, uh, and then on the next video, show this thing getting started up. So, really excited to made it this far. This has been a long time journey. I've had this Model T for, gosh, probably three or four years now, um, and just, you know, been able to work on it piece by piece and kind of tinkering on it here and there. Um, it's been fun because it's kind of been a discovery uh, session every time I, I work on it, uh, because you're used to more modern, you know, working on modern cars. Um, but it's 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 a cool car, and, and I'm really excited to get at least it, get it going and running. And uh, we'll be driving it pretty soon, as soon as I can get it running. So I'm gonna put uh, go inside, get on the interweb, and uh, try to figure this out as far as where to get one, uh, an aftermarket uh, that doesn't leak all over the place. Um, and uh, we'll get this thing running. Thank you so much for the, all the subscribers. I see cli I'm climbing every day, it seems like, uh, which is amazing to see that. Love the comments, so keep the comments coming. I appreciate that. So far, so good, and now we're waiting on this part, and uh, we will get it ordered and get it taken care of in the next video. Not sure if it's going to be this, uh, or I'm going to get back onto my Project Old Bones uh, and install some of the intake system uh, that I, that's come in. Uh, for that 6.5 liter diesel so not sure which will be the next one but stay tuned hit the subscribe button hit the little bell and it'll let you know whenever a new video comes out and i uh, appreciate it guys god bless uh, take care and i uh, appreciate the support